Born in London in 86, Sash showed Gent named Richard Parliament. He loves to wrestle, but he loves one more thing, and goes round the world. He fights in his comments and he argues with fans. It's a problem no one understands. If there's two things he loves, it's getting an and helps round the world. Drinking fine wine, fighting fanboys, handhelds round the world. Top Hat Gaming Man. Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to another exciting episode of Handhelds Around the World. A series of videos I have been producing around the globe looking at various handheld games and systems. Whilst I have produced the majority of these videos out on location, for the first time ever in this series, today I am simply at home in my games room. You see, I recently started a Twitch channel and most Saturday nights I have been streaming various retro games for both mine and the public's enjoyment. This weekend, my system of choice was the Game Boy Advance, which I streamed by playing games on my GameCube Game Boy Player. One particular game that thoroughly impressed me this week was Astro Boy. So today I am going to be talking about my playthrough experience whilst drawing some comparisons to another popular gaming series. Yeah. It is no secret that everyone's favourite blue bomber, Mega Man, is a direct ripoff of the much older character known as Astro Boy. This isn't just as simple as the characters looking quite similar either. In fact, Mega Man actually started his bloody life as Astro Boy. The original Mega Man game on the NES was never actually intended to feature Mega Man at all, but in fact was supposed to be the first Astro Boy game. But sadly, this was never to be, as Capcom lost the license, so had to create their own character and due to this, Mega Man was born. Astro Boy, known as Mighty Atom in Japan, still went on to receive a Famicom game of his very own. Mighty Atom Tetsuwan Atomu was published by Konami on the system in 1988. However, unlike Capcom's Mega Man, this game is said to be average at best. So, whilst we now know that Mega Man was heavily inspired by Astro Boy, I guess it is time to quickly discuss who bloody Astro Boy was in the first bloody place. Because whilst it is a character I have always known of, it isn't one I have ever really known that much about. Astro Boy, or Mighty Atom, started life all the way back in 1952, in the form of a Japanese manga. It was serialised in the weekly Shonen magazine, from 1952 all the way through to 1968 lasting 16 years in total. English volumes of this series would also become available down the line, but not until many years later in 2002. The story of Astro Boy follows the protagonist of the same name who happens to be an android with human emotions, much like Mega Man who was created 30 years later. The story has a slightly darker edge though than the creation of Mega Man, as Astro Boy's fictional creator, Yumatoro Tenma, created Astro Boy after the death of his son. Eventually, Astro is sold to a robot circus, run by Hameg, but is saved from his servitude by someone known as Professor Ocha no Mizu, if that's pronounced right, who is probably the character in which Dr. Light is a ripoff of. Astro becomes a surrogate son of this character who creates a robotic family for Astro and helps him to live a normal life like an average human boy, whilst accompanying him on many adventures. Since the 1950s, Astro Boy's popularity in Japan has led to countless spin-offs of the original manga, such as TV anime series, movies, action figures, food products, clothing, trading cards and of course, video games. In fact, the 1963 anime series was such an outstanding success that it became a mainstream hit on television in both Japan and the United States. Astro Boy is one of the pioneers in the anime genre and has been praised for its importance in developing both the anime and manga industry. It has been featured on numerous greatest anime of all time lists. 
In regards to the Astro Boy games though in particular, there have been a number of different Astro Boy titles produced by various different development houses across the game's history. However, one game known as Astro Boy Omega Factor, published on the Game Boy Advance back in 2004, appears to stand head and shoulders above all others. And my experiences with this game leads me to having one of the most fun Twitch streams I have ever had. The game was developed as a joint project between Sega and Treasure, which does explain in some ways why this game is so good. With titles such as Dynamite Heady, Gunstar and Guardian Heroes under their belts, you can be confident that the many titles that they touch literally turn into treasure, I suppose. Treasure were masters of 2D gaming, whilst most other developers had moved on to ugly polygon based games instead. In this game, Astro Boy has a number of moves within his arsenal. Firstly, he can beat up enemies with his fists, but each level does pretty much command that you use his rather delightful finger laser, arm cannon and machine gun attacks too. The arm cannon, as you can see, is huge, spans the width of the screen and makes any of Mega Man's attacks look girly in comparison. There are 43 levels spread across this game, and half of these contain boss battles another treasure staple which makes the game so enjoyable. There's a huge amount of variation on the bosses, which are arguably one of the funnest elements of the game. There are small bosses, huge bosses, bosses who change form, bosses with a huge amount of weapons and so on. There's also huge variation with the levels, which switch up the gameplay without losing any of the quality. For example, there are flying stages which feel like shoot 'em ups standard platforming levels, etc. Astro Boy doesn't have a huge amount of attacks, but they are all that's needed to be able to complete the levels. The variation in the levels means that some of the attacks will be used more than in others, and vice versa. We have already touched upon some of these weapons, but apart from those, Astro Boy can perform a simple jump or keep hitting jump to activate his rocket boots for a boost in the air. You can also dash by quickly hitting the directional buttons, which is useful for avoiding enemy fire. Visually, the game is great. The levels and the characters are full of detail. The characters are animated beautifully, even down to when you activate the arm cannon and the rest of the background pauses momentarily or how the enemies react when you attack them. Visually, in my opinion, this is one of the most stunning games on the entire GBA platform and arguably even puts a lot of Super Nintendo games to shame too. Treasure really did utilise the graphical capabilities of the GBA to manage this too, as the game doesn't suffer any noticeable lag. The day flows from day to night, some of the objects which are in the foreground can be broken too, and the attack effects are powerful and give you a real sense of power and destruction, especially when using powerful attacks to obliterate the smaller enemies. Touching once again on the bosses, these do make the game very special indeed. Some of the bosses as mentioned are huge and can take up multiple screens which really does give off a sense of them being an even bigger challenge. There is one boss which is an artificial sun which can sprout poisonous tentacles whilst there is another challenging trippy encounter who can send a wow across the bloody screen. One boss in particular did feel rather deja vu too I must say. The boss I am speaking of changes into a number of different forms and was reminiscent and somewhat of a throwback to Seven Force in Gunstar Heroes. Looking at this game and its playstyle, it is very easy to make comparisons to the Mega Man series, especially when you take into account the character's shared roots too. Personally, I think this game is a much more fun, stronger title than any of the games from the classic Mega Man series, and I would even be as bold to say that this game is so freaking good that it could even stand head to head with Mega Man X in terms of gameplay and overall quality. The game really is that good, and I have no idea why more people are not shouting from the rooftops regarding this game's quality. I can only predict that it may be something to do with this game appearing on a handheld rather than a console or something like that as this game deserves all the praise in the world. Apart from being as good if not even better 
than Mega Man X. I would also say that this is the best game I have ever played by Treasure as well. I had more fun with this than even the likes of Gunstar and Guardian Heroes. I would easily put this now in my top 5 Game Boy Advance games ever. What a bloody title this game is. So to summarise this video, it is truly an interesting tale to see a 1980s game series draw inspiration from a 1950s manga series to then have that 1950s manga series draw its own gaming inspiration from its imitator, eventually resulting in one of the finest gameplay experiences I have ever sat through. Astro Boy Omega Factor truly is as good, if not better, than any Mega Man game, and it is almost criminal that people do not talk about this game more. Anyway, on a final note, make sure you give this one a go yourself. I hope you enjoy every minute of the gameplay, just as much as I did. Thank you for watching today's video. Do not forget to like, comment, subscribe and hit the notification bell for content just like this on this channel every single week. Have you played this Astro Boy game? If so, how did you find your gameplay experience with this one? Let me know. Further to this, which overlooked GBA games are worth me giving a playthrough to in the future. Also, as mentioned earlier in the video, I live stream various games on Twitch every Saturday night at 9pm BST. Give us a follow right now on twitch.tv slash tophatchat where you can come and join us for a chat every week. You have the opportunity to ask me any silly questions you want or even have an argument with me if that's what you want. So why not come and take that invite? Yeah! Finally, my channel Top Hat Gaming Man is partly funded from the fantastic support and donations I receive from my lovely Patreon benefactors. So shout outs to Carl Johnson, Shizuka Kobayashi, Richard Clark, Greg Hooper, Harold Webb, Synth Spaces, Kevin Fahili, David Mountford, Andrew Bazanski, Atanas Garcia, Edward O'Reilly, Pizza Dawn, Retail Archaeology, Michael Keneally, Mark S. Hins, no sorry, Mark S. Hines, haha, <laughs> and all of my other patrons. I would really struggle to make these videos without your kindness. If you too would like to support this channel, then make sure to check out my Patreon page as well. Cheerio!